So here I have a test question here that we might see on the exam, right? It says, how many receptacle outlets are required in an unfinished basement of a single family dwelling? So one of the things that we want to take a look at is we want to see, uh, is this even going to be in this book? Now about 80 to 90% of your test is going to be out of this book, so chances are it's going to come out of this book. But there's wording that would indicate whether or not this would be something that I could find in this book. What we're looking for is what we call mandatory language. Mandatory language are things like must, shall, minimum, maximum, something that shakes its finger at you and says, you got to do this this way, right? You don't have a choice. This is the minimum that you can ever do. This is the maximum that you can ever do. This is what you must do. This is what you shall do, right? And so do I have any of that wording in here? Uh, let's see. It says required, okay? So when we take a look at this, most likely I'm going to be able to find the answer to this in this book. Now when I'm taking a look at a test question, I always want to sh make sure, number one, am I really sure that I know what that question is asking? I always want to reread the question, all right? So in this circumstance, uh, what we're taking a look at was how many receptacle outlets are required. So they're asking me how many receptacle outlets, right, in this application. Number two, does that question have any mandatory language like must, shall, minimum, maximum? Yes, sure enough, that has that type of language in it. It's shaking its finger at you and saying this is what's required, right? And then question or uh, number three on there, it says, what key words can I pull out of that question to help find it in the index? So the index on this book is very comprehensive. It goes on for 70 pages. Uh, so it's got a lot of detail in it. So I want to take a look at my test question and see what key word would I use to pull out the information in the index and find that in there. Well, um, there's a couple of different things that I could look at. I could look at receptacles. I could look at outlets, right? I could look at basements. I could look at single family dwellings. Here's a problem with single family dwellings. I just feel like that's too broad, right? By the way, I could find it if I looked at it uh, based off of single family dwellings, but that's a very broad tr uh, topic. So I want to narrow it down to something more specific. Something like basements is more specific than single family dwellings, right? Or receptacle outlets in that basement are going to be even more uh, uh, specific, right? And so we're going to look at maybe receptacles or outlets in the index. That's going to get as specific as I think I can. So normally I want to get as specific as possible, right? Hit it right on the bullseye. So let's take a look. Uh, let's look at outlets, okay, because that comes up first in my index alphabetically before receptacles. So let's take a look at that first. So turn to the back of your book, find the index, right? And we're going to go through the index. We're going to find some information in there. Now the index is a little bit confusing in that uh, what it does is it lists everything alphabetically, but only alphabetically by those bold headings, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the bold headings. We're going to find the O's. We're going to find outlets. And so if we find that, it's going to be on page 882. Now, you have light type stuff that's indented as well. What does that mean? Well, under outlets, you've got appliance, right? And it's indented and it's in um, lighter type. And so what that means is that's an appliance outlet. And then it has communications outlets or discontinued outlets. So that's all talking about outlets. So that's the context of what we're seeing there in that index. And then you'll notice for like appliance outlets, it says 210.52 or 210.50C. Okay. Now that's not page 210. That's a code reference. And that's better than a page number. Because a code reference will get you just on the page. I got to read the whole page. A code reference 210.50C gets you to the right spot on the page, right? So we're going to go into article 210, we're going to find 210.50, and we're going to find 210.50C, right? Uh, so in this case, we're going to go to outlets, and then we're going to go down in the light type here, and we're going to find um, receptacle outlets. So 210.50, it says, right? But it also has further indented, you want to get more specific? Let's talk about definition of outlets. 
Let's talk about dwellings where required. That's really what we need, right? And it tells us to go to 210.52. All right. Before we get there, let's find outlet or uh, receptacles. And so if we go into the R's, now we're going to find uh, receptacles. It says cord connectors and attachment plugs. Receptacles, cord connectors, and attachment plugs. And then if we go under the light indented, we have outlets. These are receptacle outlets. And then dwellings where required. And it still tells us to go to 210.52. So what we want to do is go to 210.52, which is where we were at to begin with. All right. So we go to 210.52. We're back on page 68. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to find 210.52, dwelling unit receptacle outlets, and then we're going to scan the headings to see if we can find anything that has to do with basements. All right. And so I go to letter A, general provisions. That's probably not going to tell me what I need. So the idea here is you don't read what you don't need. I don't need to know anything about general provisions. I want to get real specific with basements. So I'm going to skip that section. I go to letter B, small appliances. Nope, that's not what I need. I go to letter C, countertops and work surfaces. That's what, not what I need, right? I find letter D, bathrooms. That's not what I'm looking for. Letter E, outdoor outlets. Nope. Uh, letter F, laundry areas. Nope, that's not what I'm looking for. Letter G, basements, garages, and accessory buildings. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and start reading. So the idea here is you're scanning the headings to see if we can find something that has to do with basements. Now let's say I got to the end of that. I went through A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. I didn't find anything. Okay, well now I can go back and maybe read some of the stuff and see if I can find some detail on basements in like section A or whatever. Uh, but uh, the main thing that we want to do is we want to scan the stuff and find the stuff quickly. Uh, the, the quicker that we can find it, uh, the quicker we can get on to that next question and get another point in our pocket, right? We need to get 70% or 75% depending on whether I'm taking the journeyman or the, uh, the uh, contractor test on there. So we want to get to that next right answer, right? So we scanned A, we scanned B, we scanned C. None of that worked, right? We go to D, that didn't work. Letter E didn't work. And so we go to letter F, that didn't work. And then letter G, okay, now to whoa, 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 basements, garages, and accessory buildings. Now we're going to jump in and start reading. And so we go to letter G, basements, garages, and accessory building. And it says for one and two family dwellings and multifamily dwellings, at least one receptacle outlet shall be installed in the area specified in 210.52 G1 through G3. And so it says I need at least one in number one a garage number two an accessory building i don't need to read that stuff right because what, really what i need is number three basements it says in each separate unfinished portion of a basement so if i'm finding this right um, and i say in a basement i'm going to need one right so question originally if you recall that was how many receptacle outlets are required in an unfinished basement of a single family dwelling we reread the question. We made sure that we knew what it was talking about, right? Um, we found that it did, in fact, have mandatory language in it. And then we looked up key words. Now, we could have looked up, uh, we could have looked up uh, basements. We could have looked up receptacles. We could have looked up outlets. By the way, if I looked up basements, it would have said receptacles in and would have taken me to 210.52G because that's very specific, right? And so I could have found that by looking up single family dwellings. I could have found that by looking up receptacles, could have looked up outlets or basements. All those methods could get us to exactly where we need to go. The index is your best friend anytime you're taking this NASCAR exam or any other state exam. Okay, it's going to be the best way to get to the information that you need. All right. And so once we found out that it's got that mandatory language, we're going to find it here in this book, right? And again, what we did is we went into the index, we looked up outlets, we found receptacle outlets, and it said dwellings where required. It took us to 210.52, right? And then we started scanning those headings. Uh, letter A, general, nope. Letter B, small appliance, nope. Letter C, countertops, nope. Letter D, bathrooms. Letter E, 
So we don't read what we don't need. What we needed was letter G. We read that and found out that I need one receptacle outlet in an unfinished basement that's required in a dwelling unit. All right, so that's how you use the index to find questions. Now we're gonna have some practice questions as a part of this course where you're gonna practice looking stuff up that's not necessarily on the test, right? But it's a good tool to practice that so that you're well prepared to take this exam.